Hello and welcome to yet another Arkeys video. We are doing Data Race B and Branch Hatch in the group forecast. I haven't done a Data Race B in quite a while. In fact, it's also been a few weeks since I did a Data Race C. But anyway, Data Race C is not really for me this week. Me and the fifth chicane aren't the best friends. So we are doing this one. We are trying the Audi TT and the Suzuki Swift and uh, doing three races, which contains a bit of everything. And here are the highlights. Let's get straight into it. So as you can see, I have jumped onto my US account, starting from the back. I haven't done much warm up for this one. And I am mainly using my US account because it's the lowest rated one. It's nothing to do with being in the American region. It's just the lowest rated account I have. So let's just give it a go. Let's not mess up too much into turn one. In fact, I mess up a little bit, miss the apex completely, and I just have to give up that position to the Megan coming up the inside. That car actually had some good acceleration coming off the line, so it might be a decent car for this one. I'm not sure about that, but he came off to a good start at least. And uh, let's get around the, this quite tricky late apex left-hander. It takes some practice to get that one right. And uh, yeah, I'm in the Suzuki Swift in this first race. It's the first time I'm trying this car. I haven't tried it before, but it feels like a decent little car and it certainly has some good handling around the corners. Missing the apex once again. Still have to remember that I am slowly trying to get used to this combo, so you just have to bear with me. Here I actually got a good run out of the corner, but unfortunately I run out of space on the outside and here it goes full ping pong as there's a bit of a traffic jam ahead of me. I couldn't react in time. Luckily I didn't pick up a penalty and the Audi that I hit in front of me survived that one as well. Now we've got the first casualty coming up. Someone has had a nightmare coming through turn one and we just get past nice and easy and round the hairpin and we have jumped a bit further ahead in this lap. We've got another car coming off, exiting stage right, and I'm right behind the yellow Megane once again. Let's see what we can do there, going side by side into the final corner, which will probably eventually slow them up and make it possible for me to catch up. There was a bit of contact, and I try to benefit from that. I'm on the inside now, but the Megane has the slipstream, I just have to back out and make sure I make turn one without too many issues. And we are coming towards the hairpin. Once again, I just have to make sure that I break early. I was glad I picked the outside line there because of the contact. So I make a move around the outside of the Megane and manage to also make a move on the Audi, but here I miss the one board so I cannot see where to break so this looks awful on my behalf. Sorry about that one, I just missed my break point and went in way too deep. But the Audi survived once again and he's ahead so all is good. And here the Audi decides to take a trip off track. I was a bit scared that he was going to hit me once he entered the track again but we made it past and as we jump on to Lap 4, I go in too narrow and I run off the track. I had a decent gap, but now I've got dirty tires and that is going to cost me through this long corner. You see, I'm running wide, I have to slow down a lot and then again makes it past me once again. I am back down into P11. Let's just tuck in the slipstream and get down the long straight and see if we can get around the corner. This is quite a tricky corner, at least for me, I have to balance the car around uh, and we just try to stay close and you can see behind me the Audi decides to take a trip off the track so now we've got a decent gap behind us and I can just focus on trying to keep up with the Megane. But that was the end of this race, I couldn't do much more about this so I finished in a P11, nothing amazing. And let's jump into the Audi TT this time. So this is the second race. I tried to set a qualifying lap. I didn't get into the 29s yet, but we will get back to that later. 
I'm in the trusty old Lego liveried Audi and let's see what we can do with this one. I'm not really that good at jumping from car to car but we are giving it a go anyway and I think I know the Audi TT fairly well. Um, let's get around the hairpin. It sort of feels a bit more yeah, it feels bigger, a bit more chunky. It certainly is fast, but the Swift feels a bit more nimble. I'm behind Turbo Dog here, and uh, let's just try to keep up with him and get through the final corner. Nothing dramatic going on here, we just keep it going. The Brazilian driver is clearly in the pause menu, he's got the hazards on and uh, going really slow, so that's auto drive in action for you. Let's just see if we can get around him without hitting him or get hit off. And we just carry on with the race. Let's get around the hairpin as well. Yeah, you can see the Brazilian driver decides to quit. I don't know. But anyway, we are about to jump ahead in the race quite a bit actually. And we are jumping straight on to lap four, if I remember correctly. And I have a bit of a scary moment. I almost run wide. Luckily, this is a front wheel drive car, so I keep it going and uh, there's a yellow flag that clearly has been an incident between some of the guys at the front we are going to have a look at that incident at the end of the video but for now we just stay on board i didn't manage to clear him uh, as he uh, was getting up to speed but he's actually being really nice to me letting me go around the outside unfortunately he doesn't know that it's the scandinavian binning champion in disguise so I make a mess of turn one, actually slowing him down even furthermore. Sorry about that one. Let's just try to get around the hairpin at least without making a mess of that. And we carry on and we finish the race. Not much more happened. And we are jumping on to the final race. I'm jumping back into the Swift. I've set a new quality time, a mid 29. Let's see what we can do with this one. So let's get off the line, let's get used to the Swift again. Uh, it's got decent acceleration compared to the Scirocco, at least it seems. Getting around turn one, taking it nice and easy, and into the hairpin. And I haven't really studied the top time replays, but it feels like that third gear is a nice gear for exiting the hairpin. And, uh, yeah, actually the opening lap went fine just until I cut the track and picked up a penalty. How silly of me. Half a second and I cannot serve it on this lap. We just have to carry it with us around one more time and get rid of it on lap two. But we are still keeping up with the guys in front and uh, they are fighting ahead of me. Uh, and that makes it possible for me to get even closer but unfortunately it also is slowing us down a bit and that might cost me when I have to serve my penalty. You see Sirocco is going for the move, he actually gets the move done. There wasn't anything fishy going on between these two guys. They were doing it clean, fair and clean, but they were really fighting like it was lap 5 and not lap 2. Once again side by side into the left-hander here, not really the best decision as you can see. I'm a bit stuck behind them and uh, I'm trying to grab some slipstream but I cannot really get enough speed going so I just have to brake early and this entire section of the track is tricky to see where you're going. You have to brake early but cannot really see the already blind apexes with the cars in front of you. So just have to be cautious once again braking early make sure that I don't hit them and unfortunately this has been slowing us all down a bit and now I've got turbo dog he's right behind me now so I'm going to lose this position once I serve the penalty and he gets past I just have to tuck in behind and uh, get around the final corner and we are jumping a bit ahead on this lap now we've actually got the leader in front of this big group of cars so we are not that far behind and this clearly isn't going to end well 
we got the leader off and we've got somebody else off and we've got a four second penalty coming up in front of us and what that was all about we are also going to have a look at at the end of the video we just carry on and uh, as you are about to see the brazilian driver with the four second penalty he is not finished being unlucky as he exits this track at the right side there so really unfortunate for him but we are up in p3 now and as the car behind us decides to make a small trip off track we've got some breathing space behind us and we can just focus on turbo dog in front of us he is defending his position he was actually defending his position very well now it's getting really close coming into the hairpin i'm on the outside we've had a good clean race up until this point uh, I'm just trying my best. I was attempting a switch back, but I couldn't pull it off. And um, as we go through the left-hander here and start coming up the hill, I can see that I am not going to get him. He has got a better run up the hill. So I am going to have to settle with a P3 in this one. So we are jumping to the end of this race and then we are going to jump into the replay action. First let's have a look at what happened in the second race. You can see P2 is poking his nose where there's not really a gap and then he gets pushed further from behind and the leader is just sent off to the side of the track. Let's have a look at it from the leader's perspective. He wasn't really happy about this in the race yet and cannot really blame him. He got done over pretty good and a one and a half second penalty because the game just loves to slap people already lying down. And this is what happened in the last race in the video. And this is from TurboDoc's perspective. He got front row seat to the action there. And let's see the Brazilian driver, he actually saw this happening. He tried to take a white line, but unfortunately he tapped the car there. That's what gave him the four second penalty. The Sirocco is basically just getting squeezed. And the yellow Renault Megane, who made the double dive bomb, was the one getting out on top of this. And uh, cannot blame the Suzuki for quitting this one. Anyway, that's all from me. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.